The death whistle is supposed to have a haunted sound to it. It's actually supposed to sound like somebody screaming. It looks like the little tiny head from Beetlejuice to me. The Aztec death whistle. If your worst nightmare had a soundtrack, it would feature this whistle. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today I'm going to go over the death whistle from Aztec culture. All right, so let me go ahead and get into the why I've got my mask on. It is pure vanity. Here, I'll pull it down a little bit there. Ooh. I've had a beard mishap, so that's like it on the face this week. I was shaving and it went sideways and now my beard's not there and I feel very self-conscious because I don't have my beard. All right, so this week's project is on the death whistle. Now, most of us are wrapping up our, our Hispanic heritage months and I came across this video of a death whistle. It went like mega viral a couple months back. And I was like, I am going to make one of those. So that was my mission for a while. Making whistles is not something I typically do in my class because I don't really like the process of making the whistle, which was a really big problem when I was like, I've got to make this one whistle that has a very unique sound and doesn't sound like anything else. I bit off more than I can chew. I've made about 12 of these in total. I fired two of them because two of them I thought sounded sounded good. The rest of them went to, went to the scrapyard. The first one that I did was this really large skull that they had the dead style on the front of it, carved that in. And I've left this in the buff color because I'm going to spray paint these to finish them off. And I'll go over why we're spray painting them in a minute. You can totally glaze this just not what I'm gonna do for this application. Now, the sound. At the bottom, you have the opening where the rest of the air is going to come out and you have the mouthpiece on the top. Let's give it a listen. The death whistle is supposed to have a haunted sound to it. It's actually supposed to sound like somebody screaming, which is why I made the way smaller version of it. It looks like the little tiny head from Beetlejuice to me. Uh, and a much smaller opening out of the back. and you can kind of put your thumb over the back of it to get different pitches. Now, a lot of trial and error went into this assignment, but let's go over how to make it yourself. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is make a whistle. Now, I have found from experience, making a smaller, higher pitch whistle is the way to go. So your whistles are only gonna be about yay big. So super tiny, these things are tiny. You're going to make a ball of clay and then from that ball of clay, we're gonna hollow it out and give ourselves a stem piece. Now for the stem piece, I used a chopstick to hollow out the center. I would recommend using a, a small, the smaller, the thinner piece of uh, either a wire or like a coffee stir. You wanna use something really, really narrow. That gives it that, uh, you wanna minimize the amount of air going into the chamber as much as you can. Now the coil that I have on the back side here was really for strengthening purposes. It's just to give a stronger backbone to the back of the whistle. So you can see how I've got a, a notch in my clay right here. You have a opening at the top. So as the air comes into the chamber, circles around and squeals back up. It's kind of the direction that all the little historical pictures that I was using, that was the reference that I took. You take the ball of clay, you add your stem piece in, and then you put the toothpick going all the way in through the stem piece into the chamber once you're there then you'll cut out a hole over that section to give your kind of like a t-square and you'll cut out that hole to give that pitch sound and you want to tap in just a little bit on the front end um, of the whistle parts because you want to have an angle for the air to go up it's really hard to explain once you've done the whistle and you have this nice high pitch whistle such as my my little this one's not been fired <sighs> I've got it coming out of the side parts here. It's got a good high pitch element to it, not as high as I want it to be. Once you have the high pitch whistle done, that's the hard part. The rest of it is making the skull kind of armature that goes on the outside of the whistle. And what we're doing is we're creating two chambers. The first chamber is to create the sound. The second chamber is to create the echo. And you want the sound to go into the echo to create that hype screaming battle cry sound. So as you guys are watching me build the rest of this piece up, let's go over some history into the Aztecs. And as always, put the, the links down in the description below where I got all my references. Now in 90, 1999, archeologists excavated the temple of Tataloco discovered the skeleton of a 20-year-old sacrificed sacrificial victim 
who was clutching his two skull-shaped figurines. First off, let's go ahead and talk about pronunciations real quick. I went down to my Spanish teacher and I said, hey, I need help with this. And me and him were sitting there for about five minutes trying to look, we we're looking at two words, trying to figure out the right phonetical saying. And uh, we were talking about the region, we were talking about the location, and this is my best attempt. And he said it was hard for him also. So I have, I have no prayer to saying any of this right. Historians initially thought that the clay sculptures were mere toys and they were cataloged and stored in a museum warehouse. And it wasn't until years later someone decided to blow into the clay device. The haunting screaming sound that emerged from the whistle was has redefined our understanding of pre-Hispanic instruments and rituals. Archaeologists have found instruments made of clay, animal skin, seashells, and other materials by Aztecs and Mayan sites across Mexico. Yet there is still considerable debate about exactly what these instruments were used for. Some scholars believe that these skulls should whistles found in Tautelco were used to recreate the screech of howling wind because they were found in a temple dedicated to the wind god Akato. The instruments were known as whistles of death because historians believe that they were used to help guide sacrificial victims on their journey to the afterlife. Another theory holds that hundreds of instruments were used in unison to scare the enemies during battle. Personally, I just like the, it sounds like a somebody screaming towards death and that's the sound that was captured for these musical instruments. I think that's cool. Um, also, I did a trip when I was younger. I went down to uh, Chichen Itza and climbed the pyramid there and they told us all about the culture and the these like long racquetball-esque courts that they would kind of play like handball, racquetball, and hunger games really is what it came down to because the, the winner of the game was sacrificed and that was a good thing. So, death whistle, it fits. Researchers have also experimented with the effects produced when the instruments are played together at the same time. In unison, the two skull whistles found in Tautelco, nope, Tautelco, generate a, a sound that invokes a storm. Two whistles emit a greater range and intensity of frequencies. Some experts believe that the Aztecs use sound vibrations to treat illnesses because some of the whistles produce infrasonic sounds that are too low to, for the human ear to recognize. Such sounds can be a dramatic impact on heart rates and states of consciousness. Researchers are currently exploring whether the whistles were used to send patients into a hypnotic state or to alleviate pain. What is certain is that there is a massive revival of interest in the topic of death whistles in recent years. Roberto Velasquez, a Mexican mechanical engineer, has spent years investigating the unusual instruments. He has produced hundreds of replicas of the instruments found in Mexico's various archaeological sites. The musician and instrument maker, not even going to attempt this one, has also helped popularize the death whistle. As part of the group Indigenous America, this music maker has performed with pre-Hispanic instruments at countless festivals, concerts, and special events. He also made instruments used in Mel Gibson's 2006 film, Apocalypto. Today, death whistles are sold in many Mexican markets and archeological ruins. The clay instruments are usually fashioned in the shape of a, in the shape of a skull, owl, or Aztec deity. The Aztec death whistle. If your worst nightmare had a soundtrack, it would feature this whistle. And you're probably familiar with, with the skull heavy decor. Now take a listen to the Aztec death whistle and find out how this aesthetic extended into their musical taste as well. We're not gonna lie, the sound of a death whistle is the most frightening thing that we've ever heard. It literally sounds like a screaming zombie. We can only imagine what it'd be like to hear hundreds of these whistles from an Aztec army on the march. We're not entirely certain what the whistles were used for, however, they may have been used for as an intimidation tactic in war. But there's one aspect of Aztec society in which they are certainly played a role, human sacrifice. Either way, I thought that this was an amazing project and I just thought it was a lot of fun to do and I think it's fun for my students to do. So make something fun. That's what I always say. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of the homework, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all the various platforms. Educate the masses. I'm trying to get the message out there to as many teachers and students as possible. Educate all of our friends. We're definitely gonna show the spray paint things to state after the close out here so you guys can see the finished product. Hopefully the beard will be back in a couple weeks. So you got a couple more videos of me that's just kind of yep like this and but i'll see you guys soon so as always i will see you guys next class until then later guys